Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. And today we are going to talk about the reaction to this teaser trailer. Um, like anything that goes out there in the world, everyone's divided on it. Everyone um, has a different opinion, and there's a lot of people that have the same opinion or see someone's opinion and go, yeah, I agree with that, and then kind of jump into that group. Um, and I've seen everything. I've seen like a people with wild theories and speculation and I've seen people who just have zero interest at all and it's uh, the, the barometer is just like all over the place it is hard to gauge how well this is gonna do I mean based on you know likes and dislikes it's not that bad it's not like the Ghostbuster trailer or something along those lines because I remember that being really bad I don't remember the exact numbers on that one but I'm just trying to think of other Sony movies that uh, that got you know divisive reactions um, and uh, you know Jumanji obviously that's doing really well for Sony and uh, making them a lot of money so I know they were hoping for another hit and a lot of people think they just rushed this uh, trailer out too soon uh, that it's uh, it literally stands by its definition of the word teaser it is super teasery uh, even one person compared it to uh, just being a bunch of you know, scenes from other Tom Hardy movies just cut together. Like, you, it's, if you wouldn't even know it was a Venom movie uh, just watching it unless they said Venom in it. Uh, so, you know, like for the logo and stuff. And I would, you know, all of these criticisms I think are valid. Um, I don't, you know, agree with necessarily all of them. I, I found interesting things about the trailer enough to where I'm like, sure, I would have loved to maybe seen more or seen something different or shown more. Um, but again, we always talk about uh, expectations and tempering them and, uh, and, and not going, you know, too crazy. We've been following this movie for three months now and it's been, you know, in development a lot longer than that. Uh, people who are like, oh, I've been waiting, you know, my whole life for a Venom movie. Uh, I've been a Venom fan since I was a kid, but I have only been waiting 10 years for a Venom movie, a little over 10 years. In 2007, uh, when we got Spider-Man 3, uh, I had just moved out here to California, and I started working at Sony not too long after that movie came out. And I also wrote with some friends of mine, a uh, independently of Sony, we were pitching this, uh, but we wrote a Spider-Man 4 screenplay for Sam Raimi, and we had symbiote stuff in it based off of what happened in the third movie. Uh, but at that point, they announced they were going to do a solo Venom movie. So since 2007, I've been waiting for a solo Venom movie. And uh, some versions we were like, oh, we're going to get the one that already has the origin so we can just get right into Carnage. And then now, you know, it's transformed so much over the years that we are getting, you know, uh, one without Spider-Man, which uh, none of us, I don't think, saw coming. Uh, you know, all of us hardcore fans that have been following the development of this movie for 10 to 11 years now. Uh, so... It's interesting. I, I'm, I'm I ingesting all of the feedback, and I want to start with some of you guys. Um, you know, when this dropped this morning, I was about to fall asleep, actually. I was, like, minutes from going to bed. Um, and then our friend Alvaro wrote me on Instagram. was like, dude, it dropped. And then, like, within a second of that message, uh, Mr. Marius uh, commented on one of my videos saying, dude, the teaser's out. Um, so thank you guys very much for alerting me. So I just got up, and I was like, all right, let's just film it now. That way I don't have to worry about it when I go to the doctor, and I know it's up, and it's all good. So now that I'm home, and I've already recorded our breakdown video, let's see what some of you guys think of it, and then let's see what the internet uh, is is uh, reacting to. And some of you guys already know all of this and what the internet uh, thinks of this trailer, uh, but I want to start with you guys, uh, too. Uh, so Silent J said, very in interested to see how they'll do this without Spider-Man. Uh, maybe it's set in a future timeline, or the Life Foundation mixes Spider-Man's DNA with the symbiote, and that'll explain the spider symbol and spider powers. Uh, nervously excited. Uh, so, yeah, and I think Bob, uh, who responded to you, uh, said it pretty well, too, is is uh, I, you know, there's probably not going to be any of that you know, Spider-Man DNA stuff. It, it sounds like they're trying to go completely independent of Spider-Man. So I don't know if we're going to get a ton of Spider-Man references. As far as the costume goes, we obviously don't know what it looks like yet. A lot of people are really upset by that. Uh, I don't think it's a future timeline. It seems set in current day. It seems set right now and uh, with, with today's technology and stuff. So, you know, the MRI machine isn't like some futuristic looking MRI machine. So, uh, and he's riding like a motorcycle, you know, and it's like a, not a flying motorcycle. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say it's probably uh, just set right now, and uh, the Life Foundation probably didn't do anything with Spider-Man. Uh, but as far as the symbol goes, we'll wait to see the, what the costume looks like. But, um, you know, Bob said he doesn't care if it's it has a spider on it or if it's just all black. Uh, from personal experience, seeing what Venom could have looked like in Spider-Man 3, um, back when Sam Raimi did it and they made it, like the black costume, just pure, almost pure black, 
it looked very dominatrixy. <laughs> and I know this is going to be a CGI monster, so it'll probably look better in CG with black. But he needs something to break up the black. You know, you need something to have him stand out in the shadows and stuff. So the white, I think, is going to, there's going to be white on him, probably in the chest area. Will it be a spider? We don't know. Uh, but he'll have some kind of logo, I'm sure. And like Bob said, maybe the spidery logo isn't a, really a spider. Maybe it's something to do with, like, uh, you know, an um, some kind of reference to Clintar, and maybe they have like beings or gods there that they worship that have like eight legs or something. So I don't know, could be anything like that. Kind of how Superman's S stands for hope. Um, so it could be something uh, like that, Bob said. So I don't know, that's interesting theory too. Um, so uh, <laughs> Hillary says, I'm so excited now, the cinematography looks great, and the shot with him screaming looks so intense. Uh, yeah, uh, that's for sure. The cinematography in this looked really great. I know there's they got to put a lot of polish on it, um, but for some of those being shots that weren't tweaked too much, they looked really good. And that's uh, that's a big credit to Matthew Libatique, who is the, the uh, um, cinematographer of the movie. Uh, official Ash got a little salty. He said something about comic book cast. Uh, I, I think I know who that is. Um, I think that's like another YouTuber who like talks about movies and stuff. So I went and looked at like, you know, his, his reaction and I guess he wasn't like super thrilled about the trailer, but I mean, it's fine. It's, it's someone else's opinion. I don't, I don't really bother myself too much with, um, uh, I, I only watch other people's videos for like to, to make videos like this uh, like I want to see what their reactions are so I can ingest that and see what other people if other people agree or not and so we can talk about it so I, I don't you know it doesn't bother me if someone has a different opinion to me uh, I grew up reading comics and when I was a kid I was like me and my one friend Danny uh, who was from the Philippines we were the only two kids I knew in uh, fifth grade sixth grade seventh grade that read comic books um, and it wasn't until eighth grade I met a friend named Mark and he and I were big spawn fans so uh so yeah so this was kind of funny um that uh when people get so mad about other people not liking it i'm like dude i'm used to that <laughs> like it's no big deal uh will spider says it's a very weak trailer they should have uh, waited to have a cgi creature done before showing anything and that's true i, I know bob kind of you know got on him a little bit and said like oh in other words you you were left wanting more it sounds like that's what you know the trailer did its job then and it's like i i agree with bob to an extent but at the same time i think that's a valid criticism i think people wanted to see venom you know i think they wanted to see like a silhouette of them or something and even though it's kind of unrealistic to to expect to see that based off of you know us tracking this movie and knowing that the cgi is probably nowhere near done but to combat that by saying, well, they should have waited a couple weeks or a month till the CGI was done for one shot and then released a trailer. And I, it's a valid criticism, I, I feel. So, Will, I appreciate the comment very much. And uh, and Bob, I appreciate I appreciate all you guys uh, talking about this. And I'm glad we're all having like a civil conversation about it and not, not you know, no one blowing up at each other because I, I hate that. I will put a stop to that if I can. Um, so, uh uh, Cody says the part where Eddie was shaking and stuff, it, it's in a blink, but if you miss it, you'll see the black symbiote crawling up his neck. So I did notice that on my when I was going through and getting the screen grabs. Um, so I was going through watching on my phone and just snapping screenshots uh, to do the breakdown video for. And uh, and I, when I was doing that, I saw the the black coming up his neck. So I appreciate you pointing that out uh, for sure. And he says, uh, he says Tom Hardy's going to kick ass as Venom way better than Topher Grace so far. Uh, yeah, that's true. And by the way, people were asking who was narrating the trailer. That is Tom Hardy. I, I, a couple people asked me, like, who's talking? Uh, they're like, is that Riz Ahmed or something? I'm like, no, I, that's, I think that's Tom Hardy. And I think that's him that's his eddie brock voice i guess um he's he's you know eddie brock uh kind of sounds a little bit new york -y. even though he's from san francisco he's kind of got a little bit of a um you know a, a kind of a mixed accent kind of thing so uh yeah I'm, I'm i'm interested to see more hear more of that for sure hear more of him talking our next comment comes from dag or dag he says i'm very mixed with the trailer it's intriguing but i feel it had some elements that were kind of lacking Overall, the tone is right, but I hope it's not a film that takes itself way too seriously. Uh, reminds me of the Slenderman trailer from a while back, which I didn't really like. I didn't like that trailer either. Uh, that trailer is also a Sony movie. Um, and, uh, and Bob said, well, the Slenderman trailer was a random selection of unconnected creepy clips without any indication of plot or story. And I'll agree to that. It's, it seemed disjointed for sure. Uh, but I don't know if... I, don't, I wouldn't say that uh, the, the Venom trailer 
uh, was like a cl gave a clear narrative either, and it wasn't its job to. It was a teaser. The Slenderman trailer, I don't think, was a teaser. I think that was supposed to be the trailer. So Bob's right in that regard. That should have told more about the plot and things. Uh, whereas this one, it's a teaser, and we kind of have to hold it to those kind of rules. But at the same time, teasers mean anything nowadays. Like teasers could be 10 seconds long, 30 seconds long. They could have story. They could not have story. It's it, it, teasers not so easily defined anymore. Uh, but both of you guys bring up great points. Um, the uh, I, I think the tone is great for this trailer. I agree with you on that one. Um, and I, I don't want it to take itself too seriously. Not, not like Batman and Batman vs Superman, where I thought that movie took itself just a little bit too seriously. It didn't. It didn't have a, any levity at all in it. Um, not saying that there wasn't comedy moments or things that broke up the the tone to an extent, but overall. It felt like a very, you know, rigid kind of a way to tell that story. And I hope, I agree, I hope it's not like that. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, you know, it's, it's uh, I want them to take it a little bit seriously. Like, I, I always thought uh, Blade was really great at that. Like, uh, Blade and the Crow, I thought... Uh, respected their source material enough to t to take it seriously uh, so that they weren't um, doing like a slapsticky or goofy interpretation and so if that's what it takes for a director and a, a team behind something uh, if they need to take it seriously to do a, a more somber and, and uh, you know and grounded version then I'm okay with that I'm okay I'll at least give it a chance uh, I may not like it in the end uh, if it goes too, too serious, like you said, but I'll at least give it a chance to, to see it and, and let it prove me right or wrong. Um, so yeah, uh, June the Fox says, uh, it was interesting. That's all I can say. Hey, that's all right, man. Interesting is a good word to describe that trailer. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I'd like to see more of it, you know, more things for sure. But I thought what was there, it intrigued me. I mean, it certainly made a fun breakdown video. I didn't think I was going to have as much to say when I made my breakdown video as I ended up saying. So, uh, yeah, I thought that was going to be like a five to 10 minute breakdown video and it was almost 20 minutes. So that's, you know, that's pretty great. Next up, we have a newcomer, someone who just subscribed to the channel. So big shout out to Night Vision Wolf who uh, commented, hey, when does the actual trailer come out? Uh, when I saw this, because I was like leaving the hospital and I was like coming home and uh, I was cracking up. Like I was like, I got home, I parked my car, I saw the notification and I looked and I read that comment and just in my car, I just started dying. I was laughing out loud. I was like, this is funny. Because at this point, I hadn't really checked. I, I checked it while I was at the hospital, I was in the waiting room. I checked a little bit about like what, uh, you know, what people were saying online, like some of the news articles that we're going to talk about here in a second. Uh, but, uh, but seeing that, like, you know, like a, like a jab at the movie, but also like making, you know, in a humorous way, like I really appreciate that. So Night Vision will thank you. Like that was perfect when I came home and saw that. Uh, Venom Gaming has a, a ton of stuff here. So I'm just going to read this one I, and part of it. He says, uh, my prediction for the plot based on this trailer is Eddie Brock is a journalist who is having a very hard time. He was actually broken up with Ann Wang. In, in this version, he says breakups instead of divorce because he is diagnosed with cancer and he does not want her to bear the burden of losing him. Um, and then the ship crashed on Earth and the spaceship we saw in the trailer while Eddie is going to commit suicide. Then the Life Foundation led by Carlton Drake sends trucks to pick up the symbiote. There were actually two in the truck. Eddie is then contacted by the Life Foundation and sent to their base to be cured of his cancer. So I know a lot of people, I saw this a couple times, people who know their comics and read their comics know about Eddie Brock's uh, history with cancer uh, and that he uh, did have cancer in the comic books until he became anti-venom and that kind of like cured him of his cancer. Uh, but... Uh, I, it'll be interesting. I, I don't know. I mean, MRI, sure, you could you could I get you could use that to uh, you know search for cancer and cancerous cells in your body. Um, but uh, I didn't get that impression. I got the impression that Eddie just was like sick, uh, you know, infected by the symbiote, maybe because he was out in the woods and then he jumped and landed in the water and maybe you know that's where he comes into contact with the symbiote. You know, gets in his bloodstream, he swallows too much water and maybe you know crash landed near the water or something. Um, I don't know. I, it's 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 too early for me to speculate uh, too much on the plot, but it's an interesting set of theories you have there, uh, Venom Gaming. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I the suicide thing. I, I wonder about that. I wonder if Eddie is going to get pushed to that level in this movie if they're going to tackle the subject of suicide. I I mean I think they should because it's true to the character, uh, and I feel like it's relevant to today. I think suicide rates have been skyrocketing uh, all over the world. So I don't know. I don't think it's too taboo to handle that in like a comic book anti-hero movie but uh we'll, we'll see um but yeah interesting theories nonetheless the cancer thing i'm still out on, i'm on the fence on i don't know if it's you know going to actually be cancer or not but we'll 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 get we'll cross that bridge when we when we learn more uh and then our last theory comes from 
our friend, uh, hold on, I'm having trouble scrolling, of course, um, our friend Green, Green Lizard Balls. And Green Lizard Ball says, here's how uh, my theory plays out. Uh, Tom Holland, Spidey, Brock's uh, felonies, truce kept very brief, uh, Life Foundation interest in Brock symbiote, and Cletus Cassidy's colorful backstory. Um, and then Brock moves to San Francisco, nutty behavior exposes him, chased and caught by Life Foundation, Sonic boom his butt at the lab and extract the symbiote, experiment with symbiote, one symbiote sample mutates into another, and test sample on Cassidy after he signs a legal waiver, uh, can't contain him, and Venom versus Carnage at the end. Uh, but also pretty interesting, uh, I like hearing people's um, full synopsis, like full like rundown of what the, the storyline is going to be, uh, which is pretty funny. I, I cannot gauge nearly uh, any of this stuff based on what I saw in the trailer, but it's fun to see people take it to that level. Um, so all interesting things, uh, Green Lizard Balls, I, you know, the uh, Cassidy may signing a waiver thing is funny. I hope he's still a serial killer if he's in the movie. I hope they don't care about waivers or nothing. I hope he's like, uh, like a Hannibal Lecter type and he's on death row and they're like, hey, why don't we put him to good use for society and, and, uh, and, and, you know, use him as our test subject since we can't legally get a human test subject for human testing because you have to go through like years and years and years of, uh, that for a process to, uh, to, you know, occur. So maybe they're just like, ah, oh, we'll just go to the mental ward and get the most insane serial killer who's just laying in his bed drooling anyway, and we'll do this to him. And, and maybe that, maybe that's how they get carnage. Um, but I don't know, it's still too early to talk about carnage too, but it clearly we're going to Get multiple symbiotes because we saw the multiple tubes uh, that and one of them who had a symbiote in it and the other one that looked empty but maybe they just didn't finish the CG on that yet so it'll be interesting um, so yeah all of you guys thank you so much for your comments uh, the last thing I want to do here to wrap up this video is I just want to go through and read a couple of the headlines from people so you can kind of get a sense of what some of these uh, you know news outlets are saying about it some of them are clickbaity titles some of them aren't uh, some of them had really you know awesome uh, you know, feedback inside of them in the comment section. And then some were just like quoting people off of Twitter and being like, here's what this person says here. There's a, a editor at Marvel. Here's what she had to say about something. And, you know, they, they kind of went into depth about people's reactions and feedback, which is cool. And it was like, like they weren't trying to paint it, the movie as like, or the trailer as good or bad. They were just like, here's what people are saying. And I like that. That's kind of what I'm trying to do here is I just want to, uh, bring it to you guys and tell you what everyone's saying and then you guys give me some feedback on that. Um, so CNET said uh, their headline is Venom movie trailer doesn't actually show Venom. Uh, Saint uh, Cinema Blend says the Venom trailer clears up one major question about the upcoming movie. And uh, I, I clicked on this article. I, I don't feel like... I don't know. I, I, di I, I didn't really care for too much for this article. Uh, they didn't, It doesn't... The movie doesn't clear up that much like it's there's you could still speculate like all hell so uh, and i think people are going to keep doing that um so uh polygon says uh, why the venom teaser did such a poor job selling the movie and i read that article actually at the hospital today and they were talking about how uh if you're reaching out to a, a mass audience and we talked about this before uh where this movie it I knew I the one thing I knew for sure was this trailer was not going to be full with comic book stuff. Um, it would have little things in there for us to like speculate and talk about, but it wouldn't go full comic booky. It wouldn't show them jumping around the city. It wouldn't show anything that makes it look like a superhero action film. Uh, and my thought process behind that was they already know us fans are expecting that. And they want to get the non-comic book fans uh, to an extent. Although, if you're going to release, if you're making this trailer purely to put it in front of like Black Panther and have it out now, to, you know, to ride the, the 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 train of comic book movie hype that's going on. Deadpool trailer came out. Um, Jessica Jones trailer came out for season two. So if you're if you're releasing it for that period, I feel like you are targeting the comic fans, and it should have had more in there for the comic fans. That's one of my critiques of it, uh, because I felt like the average person who saw this probably has no idea what's going on. They probably just saw it and was like, oh, it looks like a cool action movie. And then they have to, their friend has to tell them, oh, that's Venom from the Spider-Man comics. And they're like, what? Like, where? So, and then I think that would just confuse them more. So I don't think this trailer did a good job of pulling in the masses. And I don't think it also did a great job of hooking the hardcore fans. Um, I think for me, I'm interested because I thought it was shot well. It looked nice. I liked the tone. I liked that it wasn't goofy and it didn't seem like over the top in any way. Um, but it was a super teaser. And uh, and I so I can accept it for that. And hopefully we'll get more with the next trailer. And hopefully that'll come out around Infinity War or like Venom Gaming said in May for Venom's 30th anniversary, which would be really good. Um, 
and uh, wantcomicbook.com. So this website, I've, I've used them recently as a source, but I really don't like using them that much as a source. Uh, they released an article today that said, uh, ever since, uh, the biggest evidence that Life, the movie Life with Jake Gyllenhaal that came out last year, uh, that was rumored to be a, a prequel to, to this movie, uh, because they're like, oh, it's about an alien that's in space, and then it crash lands on Earth at the end, and Jake Gyllenhaal is going to play John Jameson, and there was all these wild speculations. If they would have done that, it would have been amazing, but they didn't, uh, because the people working on these movies don't think like that. Uh, they just think basic, and uh, that's why they go astray a lot of times, and, and they didn't think of anything that cool. I think that's a cool idea, and, I, and that would have made ticket sales for life go way up uh, for sure. Uh, and then you could have Jake Gyllenhaal like tracking down Venom or something in this movie. So whatever, I don't know. It's 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 fine. But comicbook.com is is still uh, pontificating that life and the Venom movie could still connect. And it's just like get get over it, dude. Uh, that website is so clickbaity. It's ridiculous. Um, so let's see. Uh, Venom fans enraged over a teaser trailer that didn't um show Venom. So the rap posted that. If you put the word um in your in your title, uh, you're you're like a teenager writing these things. Like you know, have a little bit more and tact with your words like be impeccable with your words when you write stuff uh but yeah but uh i would say there were people that were mad about it and disappointed more than anything enraged i feel like that's a that's a like a, a clicky word like they're just like oh let's let's uh trigger somebody by calling them enraged or triggering the opposite side to come in and comment and be like of course they're enraged they're marvel you know uh, fanboys who don't don't like things different you know whatever it's like it, it, to me it just seems like a, a trigger word um to, to put that in there so uh, does the Venom trailer work with in, without any Venom, Hollywood Reporter asks. And I like that. I like that they asked the question, uh, does this work? And they, and they present it in their article, which I read a couple hours ago, uh, to the readers of what they think of it. So, yeah. So, uh, and why wasn't Venom in the Venom trailer by Screen Rant? And, uh, and watch the trailer for Eddie Brock the movie. <laughs> so there was so again everyone's falling back on the fact that this Venom trailer didn't show Venom and that seems to be everyone's critique of it and whether they use it to use it as like a like a hit piece in a way or like a or just like use it as their clickbaity title it's effective because it's gotten a lot of people riled up uh, so it seems um, but I don't I don't go on Twitter anymore Twitter is a very toxic environment uh, Facebook I can barely handle but luckily everyone over there has been really awesome since I've been back on there uh, and being very supportive of the Venom blog having a page on there. Um, um, so uh, yeah, it's it's you know that's fine. Instagram is more my thing. It's pictures, not a lot of words. I like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I just the I just like reading these uh, you know these responses. Uh, like for me overall, I kind of like the trailer. It was fine. It was effective in the sense that um, it didn't uh, disappoint me. Uh, but it didn't like amp me up either. So I'm kind of like in this gray Jedi zone in the middle of it, you know, where I'm just kind of like, eh, it's good and bad. Uh, but uh, but I see people on all sides, and I see people in the middle too. So uh, it's in it's just interesting to me. I, I like seeing this type of reaction because as a writer myself and as like a creator myself, I want to learn from these things. So when I see stuff like this, there is that common sense knowledge thing where people just go, uh, you made a Venom trailer, you didn't put Venom in it common sense you know like that's what a lot of people think on that level and i try to as well it's it just it's it's beneficial that way to do it uh, so when you release something and you and you know, you're like hey here's the spider-man trailer and then it's you never see spider-man in costume in the whole trailer it's it's you know that that's pushing it for sure um so there's a uh, there's validity to people saying that the trailer was released too soon and uh, and i'll probably ag I'll actually agree with that uh could it was released too soon if you want venom stuff but like i said it's it's like making a blade trailer without showing blade it's like making an x-men trailer without showing them in costume and all of those movies their first trailers showed that stuff even the first teaser for spider-man 3 had uh, the venom symbiote jump out at you um in the church after it went on eddie brock i mean that was the whole selling point at comic-con was they showed the scene where it dripped on eddie and he transformed uh so yeah even they knew what they were doing over there so uh i don't know uh, but again i want to know what you guys think some of you already commented and i know i already know what you think but for those of you who haven't please subscribe to this channel if you're liking what you're seeing and comment down below of what you thought of this trailer and what your theories are as always thank you guys for watching like share subscribe all that fun stuff i'll see you in the future peace